Welcome to Canberra. Metalheads. Season 1. The Archives. Alright, let's keep it. Welcome to Canberra Metalheads. You got Marky Malpas and Benny Benfagor. We're joined in the studio today with uh, three of the members of Clarity of Chaos. So left to right, we're starting with. Hi, I'm James Dome. I'm the screamer, Vox, the uh, the air the air taker, the oxygen re- oxygen stealer, whatever you want to call me here out of Clarity of Chaos. Hi, I'm Darren. I'm the drummer. Uh, I'm Tim. I'm the guitarist. Nice. It's good to have you guys on the show. Jeez, thanks for having us. Uh, we just listened to. Um, some Devolved, um, one of Jamie's uh, favourites that he brought in there for the show. Yeah, lucky enough to play with them back in the day, so and that's when Canberra bushfires were actually happening, so well, they were touring through uh, Canberra the following day with a band called Sun's Hour from Japan, and uh, yeah, look, they, they got me into some uh, stuff I really loved, like with, uh, and pushed a little bit further than Fear Factory and a couple other bands, and uh, really liked that sort of nice, heavy, drivey sort of stuff. Yeah, nice. No, it's uh, it's good to have a bit of that um, sort of more driving driving music there uh, to mix it up a little bit. So um, with the uh, we got sort of a new a new band with Clarity of Chaos. You guys are just sort of um, kicking off. Obviously, you've got some influences from previous bands that like Jamie's been in with, um, you know, um, some Knights of the Spatchcock and things like that. Um, how's how's the dynamic all coming together you sort of still finding like a um a style but obviously how's the band all sort of clicking the band's going really well at the moment and it's just we're still trying to find what our our sound is so to speak so um we're just writing a whole bunch of stuff and then just sort of getting together and, and listening to it and just going yeah i don't know if that's that's our sound, but it's a cool song. So we're just, we're just trying different elements and and trying different structures for the songs, just to just to try and get them. You know, they'll, they'll the guys will write a song, and I'll just grab it and I'll just I'll rip it to pieces and just say, yep. no, nah, this needs to go here, this needs to go two <laughs> more times here, and then yep. yeah, just get that. So, but we're happy with what what we've got at the moment. All the songs seem to have that different element to it. So yeah, once we once we discover our sound and and do that, and once these guys decide what amp they want to use, yep. then uh, yeah, that's <laughs> where we can go from there. Oh, look, the boys are just constantly oh, oh, I just bought this this week. Oh, I got this this week, you know, and they're just constantly bringing in different different things to the band, which keeps sort of changing the element of where we're going to go. And like Darren was saying, we can, uh, you know, as a band, we'll get the a, a solid sort of song down, and then Daz just really tears it apart and restructures it all. Um, yep. Which is a great thing to have with a drummer that that actually has that vision for a, for a song, you know, and he leads basically from behind the kit for the whole band, you know. Yeah, like, nice. Um, and have someone that plays as solid as Darren does, you know, it's, um, it's just an extra compliment to what what we do. Actually, having him can basically control it from the back. Cool. Yeah, he gets to have full everyone in full view. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He changes it up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he can throw stuff at us from uh, <laughs> without us noticing sort of things. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, you cop a stick to the, you know, to the back every now and then. Yeah. Then. Yes. Maybe. Only a now and again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Uh, it's good to keep everyone on their toes. Oh. And um, so, Tim, this, we mentioned before, this is one of your first projects. How, yep. how's it, how are you finding it um, fitting in with the band? Loving it. Loving it? Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> by, the, by the glare from the band, you just wouldn't have been able to say anything else, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's sick. It's nah. good fun. They pay him to speak highly. <laughs> <laughs> I've nah. always wanted to be in one, so, no, nah, it's, it's good fun. Cool. Yeah, it's it. yeah, I promised him certain things, and, you know, I was like, look, we can do this, we can go this, I can get you onto these <laughs> shows, and all this other thing. You know, because he was the first member I actually um, spoke to about getting, getting this project off the ground. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, just called him up randomly out of the blue and went down. He showed me sort of what he was playing and I was like, yeah, I can work with that, you know. And, uh, yeah, and then it was just a matter of, you know, bringing Darren in, you know, on drums. And uh, Tim, um, Tim already had a friend uh, in Toby, another guitarist, and uh, those two work absolutely fantastically together. Like yeah, they, nice. they, they basically feed off each other, you know. Like, um, yeah, the, the way your guitaring has evolved 
with Toby in the band. Yeah, and he's pushing me. Yeah, he's 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 quick, you know, and he's uh, cool. Yeah, and then you know, even with our bass player Chris, formerly from Rain and Terror, he's uh, unbelievable bass player and showman. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> puts on a big show. So, you know, we've got a band that's got a lot of a lot of wealth of experience. You know, like um, been doing it for many many a year. You know, like um, Daz has been in you know in Soul Crusher and Machete and uh, Kill City. Uh, even back no, I wasn't in Kill City, but uh, yeah, used to hang around with the guys a lot. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know. Definitely influenced then. Yeah, well, you know, we, we had Garth who was in Kill City and then, yep. you know, to go from that sort of 80s glam rock and then he, he called me up and he said, oh, I'm getting a new project underway and that was when Soul Crusher uh, was formed and then, yeah, it just went from there. It was completely different style. Um, hidden bands like Sepultura and, yep. and stuff like that and then because D Manufacture came along and everyone just went okay this is what <laughs> yeah. this is what it's all <laughs> about nowadays now, yeah, yeah that, was, that was a defining point in metal that Fear Factory album so uh, yeah it's it's cool like I think that every so often there's something that changes the face of of a of a, of a like a genre it's like I said with the with the '90s. It feel I feel like every genre, like right right through like metal rock, right right down to you know some some of the um, other other stuff. Everyone got a facelift over the over the the decade of the '90s. Like mm. every style of music changed, and oh. that that's why it was such an influential time. Oh yeah, it was it was, it was a fantastic time for music. I think you know yeah. like um, especially metal. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that was the yeah. We had so many different sort of styles of metal, and you know that, that was sort of even it was sort of starting to break into um, you know where 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 sort of Limp Biscuit were going to go, and yeah, you, yeah. you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, Downset and a couple of great bands that were sort of doing that sort of um, rap hip hop metal. Um, you know, Nocturnal sort of did it quite well, being the, an Australian band, um, an Indigenous band. Uh, yeah. uh, Solidly unbelievable, those boys. I've um, got to see him play in Canberra Heap, actually. So Yeah, cool. Well, it's like um, we've played on the show um, the systematic um, song with the, you know, the Ice Ice yeah. baby under track to it. <laughs> it's cool to see that little <laughs> crossover. Yeah, oh, look, it was funny, you know, when we um, when, when I was in systematic and we first uh, sort of pulled that EP out and, you know, and then you've got like the, the little systematic song you know and it's got the nice dance beat in it and you know yeah, yeah, has, yeah. has all the little things and yeah when we'd pull that out and promiscuous holiday sex you're seeing guys hands and you know it was the west east side though they didn't know <laughs> didn't know what the hell it was. they were all Whether jumping they around or not. <laughs> yeah like they were jumping around just oh look it was yeah great time yeah. it was a great time but great to see that and i always like to have a little bit of fun um with what i do Yep, uh, and it just seems like nearly every album I've done, there's been something that has that sort of element. You know, it ended up in the Spatchcocks for crying out loud as well. You yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah. And that came as a bit of a, a bit of a joke, and the whole band's like, "No, you should do that." You know, like, <laughs> yeah. And they're trying to trying to still push me to do a white rap album. You know, like, I'm <laughs> like, oh god. Do you think that um, like Systematic and and Spatchcock has um, had any influence on Clarity Chaos at all? Oh, look, it's had actually a huge um, change in what I've, I'm doing. Like, Systematic was basically my sort of dream child band. Um, yep. I, I absolutely... That band was basically... I thought there was going to be nothing after that for me. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then I sort of went into Nights and started doing a lot more cleaner vocals and cleaner singing. And it's starting to actually bleed, bleed through in the way I articulate and the way I sing. Like, I'm bringing a lot more... A little less harshness to what um, I used to bring you know, vocally, you know. There's a lot more um, big choruses and nice harmonies and that going along, as well. You know, as well to be able to drop from something so really nice and clean into a brutal, you know, like <laughs> guttural sort of uh, wretch, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. That I love to sort of try and pull out. Um, yeah, it was sort of yeah. Everything's evolved and changed in some way, but everything has left an influence in what I've done yeah. in every other band that I've played in, you know, because uh, I was in a band with uh, Darren called uh, Rise as well. Okay, he, yeah. Um, f 
five, seven years ago. Yeah. And yeah, I left that group probably about three years ago because we started doing a lot more. We started doing the Pantera nights. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that was, um, was Re- Reggae was in there on bass one time, wasn't he? For, yeah, um, we did uh, SOD. SOD. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Seeing, seeing him on bass just reminds me of Under Black and Skies. Like when you just see him like uh, back on the four strings, man. Mm. It's cool cool to see. You guys na- like nailed that cover too. Like the... I used to chat to reggae a lot more, like while that was going on, because obviously there's less going on in my, you know, in life, and we had more time to sit down and chat. And um, yeah, he was so amped for that. And when I finally seen you guys pull it off, I was just like, wow, that that's really cool to see such a heavy, hard hitting band get covered like to a T. So yeah, yeah. Oh, look, that was we, we were sort of, you know, I was sort of half about to drop a brick on that one you know because uh, it was like how are people going to take this you yeah, know yeah. like because political correctness is it's changed it, since it, that album was released like yeah. everything's everything's different oh look you it's know. even at the even like at the 80s night you, there were songs there where i'm like this this would like as as big of a hit as it was at the time if it was dropped now yeah yeah, yeah. like this this stuff you you wouldn't even get um wouldn't even get close to being on a label, yeah. let alone having a distro deal done. Exactly, yeah. And But that was where it was at the time. It was very... Back in that 90s era, um, sort of probably before grunge, when everything was just um, happy and fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just seemed to have that element before everything got taken too serious or too literally, you know, and you, yeah. could, you, could, you could have a bit of a pun or a tongue-in-cheek song and... You know, and even like Friends of Rom, like they, you know, they'll take the piss out of anything they can. You know, yeah. like you couldn't, you couldn't do that. As a, like, you might be able to get away with it still being in a punk sort of scene. Yeah, but it's it, this. It's the way I look at it is the scene around you can still like your stuff, but as a whole, society will change. Oh yeah. So like you'll always still have a, a niche, like a market. It's just whether or not how big that market will be that that changes. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah but no, it's good. It's good to see. Uh, good to see covers, but it's also we we'll always appreciate original. So it's good mm. to see all the, that influence coming together and you yeah, know, creating right. something cool. You, you know, well, we've got that sort of that nice drivey run that sort of um, Pantera sort of has in the in the background of what we do. Um, I think it's sort of what we sort of do. Yeah, do. It's, it's always good just to have that. You, you can go out and do your covers and you know you're going to get a good crowd response and all yep. that. But when you go out and do the originals and you get that crowd response and that, that cheer, mm. it, it's just a, a better feeling of, of self-satisfaction knowing that it's your stuff that they, they appreciate rather than, than someone else's. We, when we played our um, first ever show, well, it was last year's tra- um, Trapped Under Ice 3, yeah. I think it was. Mm-hmm. That was our first ever our de- debut show, you know, and, uh, you know, re- reading a couple of things coming up for it, and it was like, oh, yeah, most anticipated band of 2017. I was like, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know. <laughs> no no pressure, guys. Like, um, and, you know, we, we were so lucky. I think we, we, we were jammed on, like, 9.30 of main stage at the basement, mm. prime time, you know, yeah. and uh, we had a lot of people that sort of... Uh, We'd been around for 15 odd years and knew what we could do and knew what we, we could deliver. We had a really, really good crowd. One of the best shows, I think, you know, like even to date, like that was our first gig that we played all together, but it was still one of our most impressive shows, I think, that we'd even played, like still to this day. Um, yep. Mainly because it was, everyone just nailed their parts, yeah. you, you know, and came out strong and still put on a show, you know, yeah. and um, not a lot of people expected that from a band's first gig, you know, yep. and... And we've just gone on and on to bigger and better things ever since that started. And, um, yeah, we, we just hope to now get our recording done in the next couple of months and have an out, have a, actually a product out to sort of uh, get out there and sort of... Uh, Represent you? Yeah, yeah. Look, it's so much easier once you get that product, you know, yeah. like to, to sell your wares at the moment. You know, it's like every time we, we went close to going into recording or wanting to start recording, it's like... Oh, we've got a couple of shows offered here and there, and yep. you know, so we're just taking them You're as taking much the as gigs, yeah. yeah. Like so, but I think a year in is pretty much the right time for a band to sort of gel Put enough and out. yeah, and get a get a, get something out into the market. Cool, yeah. We're looking forward to that, um, and uh, looking forward to see how it all fits together. You've uh, yeah, you see, you've had a few gigs to build a build a um, build an audience. So then, once you've got something, it'll be ready to roll. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's. 
um, good hearing a little bit more about the band to kick it off with because obviously um, without that introduction of being able to show music it's good to learn a little bit about the band and then get to know everybody get to know their influences and their and their backstory so then it sort of paints more of a picture when you hear the music we, we spoke before about some of the previous projects that we had we've obviously been across a lot of Jamie's stuff um, but we we touched on um, some stuff that you've been in Darren with um, you know soul crusher and things like that yeah um, how, how's things sort of evolved over the past like since since those days and the influence of playing in 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 soul crusher compared to clarity of chaos well it's just it's it's two different bands but um with soul crusher it was um just one of those bands where we we clicked together and we we worked hard at what we did and we, and you know being lucky enough to win on earth back in the day we were the only metal band to ever win that that competition so that that started to really uh, take us yep. places and, and stuff like that but a lot of people thought that we sort of got everything handed to us from that that point where um, it wasn't so much the case we, we still had to work very hard mm-hmm. uh, for what we what we did um, but it was it was great times back then and it really really showed me what I had to do as a as an artist to if another band was going to come along, what how hard I'd have to push myself yep. to get those bands going, and that's why I've sort of taken the reins on on song structures and and stuff like that with clarity because uh, I it, you know I can't can't go backwards yeah. from from what I've done. Yeah, and I think that it also helps. Um, it, it's it's productive to the band as well to have that extra level of experiences uh, like from from previous bands i mean a lot of the time people try not to have heavy influences and have bands that sound like their previous bands which it, it's good to be able to separate yourself from that and sort of have the positives from being in a previous band but mixed with a flavor of a new band to create a new dynamic yeah. oh yeah, yeah it's, it's it's great. Like we've um, sort of me and Daz have sort of gone in and out of like about three different three different bands, and yeah. um, each one has had had an element of something completely different in it. You know, um, and it was just it's amazing what um, you know two, one or two different members in different bands. You know, like we've sort of seemed to have had um, I've had Darren, Paul, and Garth who are all from Soul Crusher. Yep, that have all come up in in different bands. You know, like I've. Um, Played with Darren and Garth in Rise, and then um, even had uh, Paul come along for a couple of the Pantera nights as well. So it was it was nearly like a um, Soul Crusher reunion. Yeah, you know, pretty close. Yeah, with just me being a nosy bastard. And, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about me? What about me, guys? Yeah, yeah pick me, pick me. <laughs> so, you know, I was like a I was like a a, a fan of um, Darren's music. Um, you know, twenty five years ago when I first met him. So. Um, and to sort of still be sort of around and um, playing music and one of, and ending up being one of my best friends in Canberra, like it's uh, it's been great how we've been able to sort of move move on. Like we didn't know what each other were doing for 10, 15 years. No, like yeah. we yeah. we hadn't seen each other, and then just all of a sudden, Machete was were playing, and um, and uh, which was sort of like a pre precursor band for um, what Rise was going to be, and because um, yeah, we ended up. Uh, Having using half of Machete and half of Systematic to form Rise, you yep, know, like yep. so, um, yeah, the, the the shell of the band with um, Darren and Darren and Garth and uh, Rob Prado was yep. playing guitar at the time as well, and then um, my band fell apart. Yeah, we ended up uh, just having a chat, and the next week we're all jamming together again. You yeah, know, so. yeah, it's it's good to see people. Like we've said about it um, before on the show. Um, bands that have well certain members of bands that follow through the scene and you can see um influences in each each band that they get into like sometimes you'll see a band and you'll be like i know who would fit into that band to make it what they want it to be so it's 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 cool to have that level of experience but at the same time it's also good to have maybe um some experienced members with with people that are just starting out and bring the the new new ones up and that's nearly like what you've done here w- with um tim 
Yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah, you, can, you can talk a bit there, Tim. You can, yeah. yeah, but um, like, so we were talking earlier off mic about some of your early influences. I know we we're at the same gig in 2012 with um, Lamb of God, Black um, Black Delia Murder, and In Flames. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, what sort of music sort of got you into into the into the scene and style? Uh, sort of Slipknot back in the old days, and then Metallica, but Lamb of God and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like we've had similar influences <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. coming up. But um, you can't beat some old metal. I'm going into the underground sort of stuff now. I didn't, I didn't know it back then. So it's a natural progression usually <laughs> yeah. to go down. So you you'll choose your your um your gateway bands, and then you'll favor favor a style or even an instrument. Like obviously, like I'm I'm a um not so much anymore. But back when I was in high school, massive fan of corn because I love bass. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I was just drawn to that instrument. And that and that and that band. So usually, you know, you'll choose you'll choose influences yeah. that way. Um, and obviously, with uh, Lamb of God, you got massive guitarists. Yeah, massive big guitar. Like I, I watched the uh, documentary they did with the um, it was with the Raff album when they were recording that or yeah. around that time. And uh, they'd saying that Mark could just go away and just be playing guitar by himself. They'd be like, oh he's just doing his thing you know he's just sitting there in the zone had going through it yeah and uh yeah it shows in their music and it's good to get influence from it it's cool to get influence from a band that you know has put in so much work um and then you can feed off that so yeah. it's nearly like you don't need to start from scratch yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're, we're in the normal key when we first started playing yep. and then we sort of went to i sort of showed uh, Toby like we'll go drop D and then yep. went to drop C and then he started punching out riffs and we're just like yeah that's mad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah then it's all magic's happened after that so yeah so like like I said before it seems like um, you can only sort of get to a certain point by yourself and then once you get other people just giving you a leg up and and cha- and sort of helping you progress yeah it helps out yeah well, each one of every every band I've seen seem to have been in has had um phenomenal guitarist and, yep. I, uh, and that sort of probably came from um probably my, what i listened to growing up as well you know yeah i do i love my singing and things like that but in my heart i'm sort of probably a wannabe guitarist you know like but i was I'm never going to be that good with arthritis and things like that so i was like no I'll just stick with what i know but i had all the into all the malmsteen and steve Vai and mm. sort of joe satriani sort of yeah, stuff yeah. i used to absolutely love that um listen to that stuff all the time and it's a good base to build on yeah there. and yeah. um so and then i sort of you know as soon as you know cowboys from hell you know pantera sort of dropped and fear factory were out there you know and it's like geez i love love that love that nice nice aggressive want to run up walls and yeah, you know yeah. bounce off stuff sort of music you know from yep you know, and a lot of, you know, completely different to what I was listening to in the 80s, you know, which was very glam orientated because they were brilliant guitarists, you yeah. know, and, uh, but, you know, every, every one of those bands as well, you know, that ended up being a really great band, you know, even with Iron Maiden and a lot of, um, you know, uh, David Lee Roth, you know, Billy Sheen, you know, on bass and, you know, Iron Maiden, you got Steve Harris on bass all these bands had brilliant bass players in yeah, as well yeah. you know you can talk as much as what you want about you know the the lead guitarists and what they do um and even when you go to the extent of bands like living color mm. you know every band member's you know sensation like yeah, so yeah. if you're if you're a musician or a lover of music it, it i think you can find an element one element in the in that uh in a, in a band that yeah. you can really love you know, so. yeah yeah and it leads you on to other other bands that might you know um, be associated with that band or have played with that band. You've got some gigs coming up, um, you know, where you're playing with. Obviously, being a, a a new band, you're building that you're building that following. It always helps to play with with other bands that are sort of similar or match um, your style. You um, we've we spoke to uh, um, Tommy, who's who's in Hostel, which previously Kit and Hurricane. Um, and you know another awesome guitarist there as well. Um, to have that that extra um, companionship amongst the entire scene, where you guys can have, you know, known bands that sort of fit with the with you on the bill, and just have um, 
other bands evolving around that or mixing it up a bit uh how are you guys finding you're fitting into the actual scene with other bands and being on bills with them yeah yeah definitely and uh a, a lot of the bands that we've played with in the past have, have been definitely more thrashier than than what we are we're sort of not quite that that quick thing we're, we're starting to progress into that that sort of thing but we've still got the the really heavy elements and we, we get a lot of feedback from the other band saying you know that's really cool and to to play these shows with all these different bands that are you know all different sounding and stuff like that and and know that at the end of it we we actually fit it in our style fit it in with that that's that's a huge a yep. huge influence to say okay we can we can do this you know and and just get on with what we've got to do and just say right we don't have to try and change our music to try and fit in yep. with these other bands. What we're writing at the moment is working, yeah. and that's what we're comfortable with, and that's what we'll yeah. that's what we'll stick with at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's been playing some of the shows that we have. You know, like um, Flaming Wreckage, Black Swamp, where we last played down at Maria. Yeah, it's yeah. Like that was that was unreal. Like I've I've been lucky enough to play. Um, we'll open up for uh, a Flaming Wreckage show once before, and that was when I was just doing uh, grunge covers. And yeah, the most odd thing, odd band, you know, like it was like, yeah, here we are doing a bit of Alice in Chains, a bit of Soundgarden. Mm -hmm. These guys are just one of the most brutal, destroying live bands in Australia, you yep. know. And I always, you know, I said to them back then, it was like, oh, can't wait for you to hear my original band. And then two years later, we end up doing it again, you know, playing together down in Maria. Yeah, yeah. Back in what I really love and what I really like doing. And, um, but yeah, every band has been so so positive about what we've been what what we we're doing and um everyone's always been asking straight away where's the product you know where's yeah. you know they, they want that t-shirt they want that cd yeah. they, they, <laughs> they want it now you know yeah they want to wrap it and we've, we've and listen to it yeah we've had that for the last the last year solid and it, it only comes down to the the bands that have offered and put us on their shows and had us a part of it they've they've been they've believed in what we we can do and what we, and how we play and um, yeah, I think the bands have sort of been our biggest supporters uh, rather than a fan base to start with, yeah. which is a great place to start, you know, like, you, you know, you've got the support of the whole local scene and that they're putting us on shows um, that if we if we were a band that probably just started off from scratch, like, yeah. and, and nobody knew us in the scene, we'd probably be scratching around for two, three years before we'd be getting up to the this level. level. Yeah. And, you know, we're... We're playing with sort of Canberra's, Canberra's best bands um, and the bands that come through from interstate. Like, um, like I'm saying, we're going to go down to Maria again soon. And um, Hidden Intent, headlining yeah. that show from Adelaide. Like, absolutely unbelievable band. Couldn't believe it, actually, when, we, when I saw the notice for that. Yeah. And then with the lineup with Hostel coming down, Inebriator coming down as well. So we, we we're gonna we're gonna be playing amongst friends and um and new friends down at Maria. Like um that that little scene's starting to really kick off, isn't oh, it? Oh look, it's 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 fabulous to see. Like um I lived in Bateman's Bay in the early nineties. Yeah. And there was nothing. You yeah, know, yeah. There was absolutely nothing, you know, down there. And um, yeah, when I moved to Canberra, I said to a couple of people, oh, I'm moving to Canberra to play in bands, you know, like yeah. and play in metal. And they sort of had a bit of a laugh and a chuckle. <laughs> yeah, 20 odd years later, I'm still doing it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you're going back with a bunch of other fellas that are doing the same thing. Yeah. And I, I get to message all the guys from the football club that I used to play in down there. And you guys coming out? And they're like, oh, I've got, no, I've got kids. I've got, the, <laughs> <laughs> got that. You know, I like, uh, won't be doing work, work, working now, paying off a mortgage, you know, yeah, not going to yeah. do that. Like, you know, it's just uh, I just chose a hobby that sort of uh, let me relive my youth a little bit longer than probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, the thing is, like, the scene down there has been growing over years. Like, I remember, so Lukey and I, when we were in high school, we were hanging out with, with the goth kids, just hanging out, because that was the only group that really listened to music that we were into. And there was only about five or six people in the whole school that used to just sit together and listen to Ramstein, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, eventually it just sort of kept going. And, like, we're talking to um, Nick from Claret Ash because he was from Batemans Bay as well. And he was saying that him and a few of his, a couple of years older than me, same thing at Batemans Bay, um, was that next wave of, of um, you know, fans of music, heavy music. And uh, so pretty much ever since high school, that's seen, like in my age group, has been picking back up again. 
And now you can see, like, several years later, you look at the crowds down at Maria, like, mm. you've got... A fairly, it's a fairly young crowd as well as like some of the originals as well. Oh, look, it's fantastic to see. Like I, I, I when it when it sort of came up that I'm oh, playing a show in Maria, I'm like, geez, I wonder how that's going to go. You know, yeah, like, um, awesome. yeah, and um, just you can see the work and you know even the publican down there that actually runs the pub. Yeah, Mark, like, Mark the owner. Yeah, he's um, he's absolutely fabulous. Yeah, like, he's like, oh, look, this brings a whole new element to his pub. You know, like they can have DJ nights or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah. And they get packed, but yeah. at the same time, like he was saying when at the last Heathen Fest, this is the best crowd we get, mm. like for as far as people, like uh, um, responsible. Yeah, people. and yeah. Um, look, you know, look, the boys, most people that like metal, you know, will will have a drink. Um, a lot of these DJ nights, yeah, everyone's drinking water and you know, yeah, yeah. And dancing around and. So you know, it's not not actually. It's we not actually. We know what they're doing. It's, they're doing. it's not actually. <laughs> it's not actually good for the the venue in a way. You know, because they they've got to have all this staff on security on. Yeah. Um, you know, paying for someone to come in with a PA and all you know, the extra and all, all overhead, the, all the all the overheads. But if there's nothing going over the bar, you know, like you know, yes, there's got to be a responsible drinking and, you know. But even with people in the metal scene, you can see them put away so much grog, but they'll still have um, manners and, you know... Respect. Just, and yeah, re respect for their fellow human, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, or regard, you know, let alone respect. You know, if they, they bump into you and, you know, spill your drink, they'll, they'll be the first one to be buddy putting another beer back in your hand. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. giving you a pat in the back. And, yeah, you end up sort of sitting with them and hanging out with them for the rest of the night. And uh, Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a growing scene around. I mean, Canberra's got a thriving oh, metal scene, and at the, at moment, the moment, probably the best I've seen it since I've been. Yeah. Only getting bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. I mean, back in the day, I mean, when I was back in high school, and this is sort of in the eighties and that, yeah, and, yeah. and metal was just sort of taking off, and that's when you used to wear the the jackets, like yeah, the, yeah. the sleeveless jackets, all the patches all over. Yeah, but, yeah. But we were outcasts. Yeah. Back in the day, yeah. And to watch it progress through the 90s and that to the to what it is now where it you know it it's it's not a it's not a frowned upon style of music anymore yep. and and people really really like what's going on and and how you know how people behave in the in the in the society yeah and uh yeah it's just great to see but the, it, it was all that changing changing point as well in the 80s early 90s you know like with soul crusher you got to play a medal for the brain as well didn't you yeah well we we um Back then, I was in a band called Nemesis, yep. and we played the very first Metal for the Brain. Yeah, right. Um, so, and we were the first band on, and so I, I get that that little bit of glory where I can say, I counted in the first song, and so basically I counted in Metal, Metal for, for the, the Brain. brain. Yeah. And you know, we got to, we got to play there several years later with Soul Crusher and, yep, yep. and stuff like that. But it was it was just a it was that that day every year that people. Oh, look forward to people would come from you know like I, I was living you know down at uh you know marimbula pambula down there and you know it was a matter of traveling up to canberra you'd see people from sydney adelaide you know like yeah. melbourne coming up just for metal for the brain you know yeah. and it was just something something unique about canberra and um just the people in canberra that have this scene and a passion for something that had just go for it and put themselves all out there you know and it's just like with reggae opening up rock ape and some of the bands that that he brought in and brought up like he was one of the first people to actually bring temptress up yeah yeah um and you know give them their no they were only just just starting out at the time and yeah reg's like oh this band here you know and mm. he was he was someone that was already so passionate in the scene um yep. and and helped out so many other people you know the uh, rock ape was a grooming ground for for young upstarting bands and, yeah um yeah and without people like regs you guys with canberra metalheads yep. um and you're seeing it, it every everyone starts to get behind it and start pushing you know when they see see something good happening for the scene and yeah um and it, it is actually all happening at the moment yeah like, forgotten who who it was but one of the previous bands was saying it's nearly like the second wave of the of the metal scene right now. It's really starting to gain momentum, and it's finally getting back to the point where it's actually, you know, comparative to the 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 rock ape metal for the metal for the brain days. Like we're getting yeah. some big bands coming through in the last twelve months. Oh, it's, it's been unreal, though. Like, you know, it's a, a list of who's who, who's who coming through. You know, yeah. like 
I've heard some rumours of, of a band that might be coming through. Um, I, if it is Sacred Reich, I'd love to see them actually come through. Yeah, but I yeah. think I still hear that that sort of might still be in the discussion and they might actually still be coming down here to Canberra. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, they were they they were a very influencing band um, for me back in the day, even as well. So and and to have have them destruction, you know, Cradle of Filth, bloody Van Amink, Van Amink, yeah, like, um, and that all coming here, you know, Jeff Martin from the Tea Party. Oh, we had um, like Angry Anderson played. Yeah, you know, like things to come as well. We've got like for most bands that would normally just pass through, over Canberra. You know, we've got Parkway Drive, Kill Switch Engage, Black Delia <coughs> Murders coming, like. No, yeah. Thy art is murder, like mm. things like that coming up. Um, where when things like, you know, Soundwave and things were were kicking, those bands would do the Soundwave tour, and maybe they we could get one that dropped through Canberra. But now they're just all sort of hitting here as well. So and it, and it helps out with the the venues being at the standard that they are. You know, like um, you go to some other places in other states, and yeah, look, it's uh, that they, they, they're only just getting started. Yeah, or, um, it's a, or it's a venue that can do multiple types of gig, and tonight they're doing metal. Whereas you notice that, like things like the basement, they they're prepared, they they've got the scene built into the bar. Like it's 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 suits the type of yeah, music. It's, it, it's it's not just a a venue that can do multiple things and they're doing a metal night tonight yeah um but yeah but it's, it's just a comfortable place to be you know it, fe- it feels good you know it feel it, it's got a good vibe and and a good atmosphere like every time even when you go in there when there's not a you know if you go in there during the week and there's not a band on you want to just hang out and maybe play a couple of games of pool. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just got a good vibe. Or hit the pinball machines. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, um, you hear so many people just say, I've never heard of this place. This is my first time here and this is amazing. Yeah, place. exactly. You know? Yeah, or, that walk in and look at that ceiling and it's all yeah. guitars. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It's like, wow, you know, like it's... Uh, so we've got, um, you've got some gigs coming up. We know, um, we spoke earlier about the uh, Maria one. So that yeah. one's on the... 3rd of August. So, uh, 3rd of August at the Maria Waterfront. Yeah, the 8 yep. p.m. start. Look, um, even if you got if you want to buy tickets online, I think they're doing them for 12 bucks, you know, yeah. like so... You get four bands, like you know. If, if you've got nothing to do and you're sick of the cold, yeah, three yeah. bucks a band. You can't yeah, argue with yeah. That. You just yeah. come, come on yeah. down yeah. to Maria. Yeah. Come on down to Maria for the night, and you know, have a bit of have a bit of fun down there. You yeah, know? Like, exactly. Um, like you could yeah. probably when it when you add it all up, it's not even that far. Like it's it's a it's a nice cruisy trip down. Accommodation isn't that expensive. No. And the 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 night is going to get in the door is going to be the cheapest thing that you get in there when normally that's what you budget for. So yeah. Yeah. Oh look, yeah. That, that that'll be a great night. And then um, was it the following weekend on the eleventh? Eleventh. Yeah. We got panic. Yeah, panic from uh, the boys from Wollongong are actually coming up on their snap your neck tour. Yep. For, um, so. They'll they'll be coming up and um, treating treating Canberra to some nice uh, nice old thrash. I think you know they, yeah, they see yeah. some of their stuff is absolutely hilarious that they post up um, on Facebook. So if you you're not a Panic fan, um, get on there and uh, just get, have a have a look at some of their stuff on their Facebook. You'll yeah. uh, you'll be very impressed, you know. And that that's going to be a, a really big show, I think. You know, like um, we've got a very mixed um, support lineup with. Um, just great Canberra bands like Metasphere are playing, Sonic Tide, hence the test bed and ourselves. So, uh, yep. mate, we're, we're, there, there's a bit of, um, you know, there's some, some good uh, alternative rock. There's some nice, um, like, hence the test bed. I don't know if yeah, you... Yeah. Um, they're just... They're probably one of my most favourite band. Um, if you haven't listened to their stuff, check out Monsters. Yep. Um, that song it might be five years old, but yeah, I still sing that every. It's in my yeah, head. It gets stuck head, in yeah. there. You know, we we all seem to have a, have association with each other in some way and have affected each other. You know, Reign of Terror has been a big influence on me. Yeah, yeah, and um, and the scene as well. I think. Yeah, I'd, he's yeah. him and him and Lucy. You've mentioned uh, reggae or Lucy in Canberra. Yeah, and it's like who doesn't know. People and are still it, like people are s- still talking about Armored Angel. Like yeah. people, like it comes up regularly on the show. Did Lucy sends us stuff? Like he sent us a um, Psychrise album to play. Yeah, like yeah. that. Like he still remotely can influence the Canberra metal scene, and 
and change and change the the sound of like the show just by sending us an album or mm. just by you know flicking us a message or something like that like he's such a big influence well and he hasn't even been living here for 10 years like yeah exactly <laughs> like he can just he, he's such moved a big away boy. and yeah. oh look you know i I, I hope he actually does um, come back up here to Canberra and visit get, visit us all again, you know, because yeah. uh, he's, he's someone that we've, you know, uh, every time I used to sort of run into him and have a, you know, chat with him, he, he was just someone that uh, always gave his time and I was, I think I was 16 when I first met him and, yeah. you know, he, he was this guy in Armored Angel working at, down at Buddy Impact Records. Yeah, yeah. And this is before, um, yeah, when Impact was down near the casino. Yep. And, um, yeah, look... He was he was like a rock god, you yeah. know. But at the same time, would be you'd walk in and he'd be like, you know, I'd only met him sort of twice. He knew us from down the coast and things. And I'd walk in there and it's like, hi James, how are you, buddy? Um, check out these CDs and or records, you know. Yeah, like yeah. The, here's some new stuff that you might sort of like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he always remembered what I bought and you know what and, was, and, and what I was into, yeah. And just would always just go out of his way, and you know you'd sort of expect half of these people to have have an ego or be non-approachable yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and they're they're all so you know even with um yuri as well like they're yep. such approachable people yeah you know and um yeah so- we, well we were, i was talking to um brendan from tortured about um get doing a thing on the show with yuri um because tortured sort of um hasn't played for a long time and they except for the other night uh recently they did one gig back with the um Golgothan remains um gig at the at the bar but um i mean that's the goal just to have your yuri and some of the um earlier influential like um metalheads on on the show at some point and just have a chat about things um just to see where it all came from and he's like i said lucy's been a massive supporter of the show and he's you know he shares our stuff he likes our things he sends us music and like i said the like he's been away like you said for 10 years like the mm. the dude's such an influencer yeah, so yeah. well that was that was a gig that everyone back in the day when it was you know you knew there was an armored angel gig yeah coming up and if, if you were lucky enough to get the support for those guys and that was it you know and even back in the old days at the civic youth center and just everyone would meet there was a massive meet up you know, the community would just all get together and yeah just the the shows used, used to go insane yeah yeah really good really good days back then yeah no i can i can imagine so well um i can only imagine <laughs> but um i'm the same yeah <laughs> oh you youngins yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, no, it's been good to have you in, do a bit of an um, intro to the band and a little bit of a um, sort of a, a teaser behind the scenes um, before you guys start getting some product out there and um, we really start sort of pushing that, pushing the, um, you know, the recording and things like that. So Yeah, look, um, yeah, we're, we're just really happy to basically get our noses in here with you guys, have a bit of a chat about where we're going, what we're going to do, because um, I think this album that we're going to record... If we do capture it the way that we, we think we're going to get it, um, it, it should be a pretty impressive album. And it right. should, should be a, a, a pretty pretty good start for our band. Um, yeah, we've, we've been, just because we've been around for that long um, in other different areas, a lot, of, a lot of doors are easier to open and, and to get, get, get through. You know, we, yeah. we, well, we know the way, the way to get through. You've been there before, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. And um, everything's going to come together, and um, because we've got nothing booked at the moment yep. um, after it, so um, so on the third of August down at Maria, and then um, on the eleventh of August back here at um, the basement. So yep. um, they they should be two two brilliant shows. To and then sort you're going to hook into the yeah then, yeah time to start pushing ourselves yeah, now yeah, and, and get in, get the products out, and and get out there and and promote it. Yeah, from cool. there in, get and, some get some new tracks, and um, hopefully get a solid tour out of it as well. You know, like head up to Sydney and you know a couple of you know get up to Brisbane as well. You know, like and uh, yeah, just contact the bands that we all know up there, and mm. um, you know even try and get hold, get even get Segression to come down here and do our CD launch with us because we played with them before and absolutely you know, <clears> love <throat> them guys. You know, uh, no, so we're just going to keep keep plugging away and um, yeah, and hopefully come out with something. Look, we're not going to create a masterpiece by any means but we're going to do do something that's going to be really really good that i think the um camera crowds are going to love cool no that's um it's a it's a it's a, if you can do 
anything similar to what you guys are doing on stage, it seems to be received pretty well. So if, if you can represent that in an album even closely. Yeah, well that's, that's what we're trying to push um, for and just try to get that, you know, where people can put the CD on and go, yeah, I like this. Yeah. yeah. And if I can get that response, then, you know, I'm happy. Yeah, exactly. We have one of the guys, David, that's um, going to be recording us just come to rehearsal, you know, like, these guys, are, they're coming out to our band rehearsals, you know, rather they're spending time with us, you know, at, at jams just to, to know exactly what they want to, you know, what they've got to capture out of our band, you know, because yeah. it does have that real live energy yeah. and we've got to, you know, you record some stuff and it can just, it just has no feel or life to it. So we've got, we're at that point where we've got to balance of getting a, a good, good sounding record as well as getting that sort of that live energetic feel. And um, and we'll we'll hopefully um, in a couple of months we'll uh, be able to send Chris and Toby and our uh, couple of other members of the band and uh, to actually uh, sell this new CD to you all out there. You yeah, because um, it's going to be good. Like it's probably going to be one of the best things that I think I've I've ever been involved in. And I think it's just because of the the whole members in the band. Like everyone, we're we're all great mates to yeah. start with. And, that always um, helps, and, and also you're all so so passionate about um, getting it out there. Yeah. Oh, look, you know, it'll be something that uh, we'll, we'll all cherish in the end, and yeah. Uh, yeah. all the hard work we put in will uh, will pay off. So, uh, cool. Good on your camera, and uh, thanks for all everyone's support. Actually, so far, it's been the a hell of a first year to play all the shows that we have yep. with all the bands that we've played, and basically everyone in the scene, um, and and already getting fans you know like you know, we nearly got 400 over 400 likes on nearly on our facebook page in a year yeah right which is um you know it's, it's pretty all right like <laughs> well it's good like to to push it that hard and get out there that far so you, got, you guys have definitely got some reach already so um it'll only ever grow and with the new products coming out um eventually that'll 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 just head it all off yeah, so, uh, yeah, so thanks very much for coming on the show. Uh, you guys been listening to Clarity Chaos. Yucca, yucca, bam! <laughs>